gaskets, hand holes, man ways, all today on the boiling point. Welcome to The Boiling Point, I'm Richie Ware, and this is a familiar face, Brian Grindstaff with our parts division as well as BoilerWarehouse.com that is so popular out there. So we want to talk today though a little bit about hand holes, uh, some gaskets, uh, some man ways, talk a little bit about maybe even how to size a gasket, Brian, but yep. just uh, maybe just give us an overview of what they are, how they work, and, and we'll just go from there. Sure. Um, starting with the handholds and manways, you've got uh, a couple of uh, handhold plates here um, that you can see. Uh, these uh, handhold plates are for clean outs for the boilers. You'll find them sometimes in front tube sheets. You'll find them positioned around the boiler uh, for you to be able to remove sediment and scale from the bottom, clean out. So are they all the same though? So yeah, the, we can talk a little bit about the differences. So, you know, depending on the boiler manufacturer's design, they may have different sizes uh, depending on the position of where they are on the boiler. Okay. Um, like uh, York, for example, uh, they've got a front tube sheet. Uh, okay. Some of the Johnstons do too. They've got a front tube sheet. And uh, the handhole size that they put in those is different from the rest of the handholes that go in the other boilers. Okay. Um, and then also the surface of where that sits um, is a flat surface against a tube sheet. Okay. Um, on the shell of the boiler, the plates will be curved for the shell. Okay. So, you know, when you're pulling those things out and you're maintaining the boiler, you need to keep track of where you're pulling it out and uh, the position of the handhold and whether it's curved or flat. Right, um, right. Yeah, because this one actually has a slight curve yep. uh, to it. And some of them are even more slight than that. Like mm -hmm. it'll, uh, to the eye, it'll, it'll look flat. You can lay it down on the table, it'll almost look flat, but it's not quite flat. Yeah. So you, you do need to pay attention to that. And that um, seal is so important, mm -hmm. you know, where if it's not, then that steam leaks and starts cutting yes. around there, and then you've got problems. Yeah, you'll get wear problems if something's not uh, seated right, and of course, uh, you know, you're, you're gonna get leaks immediately too. I sure. mean, this is, this is holding water in the boiler. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you don't have it quite tight, uh, you put it under a little bit of pressure or something like that, you'll start seeing water come out. And it's, it's not as simple as just tighten it up sometimes. Right. Uh, you gotta, you gotta take it back all, you gotta drain the whole boiler, take it all back apart. Yeah. So, um, you, you want it real quick, yep. it's just something that, that, you know, you see some stuff out there and mm -hmm. I've seen some stuff to where, uh, you know, handhole goes in, right? Yep. But yet the hole itself is actually just as big yeah and then they take a gasket and get a bigger gasket and yeah. try to pull it tight and seal no and no it's just so yeah. dangerous yeah you, the key of the handhole here is you want to be able to get it in there and you want to seat this metal on this lip of this handhole wants to seat against the metal lip of the boiler mm -hmm. the gasket that goes on it is just made to sandwich between the two so there should never be a scenario where you have the plate and a gap between the metal on this and the metal on the boiler. Okay. You, that, there's something wrong there. Right. I mean, some boilers, the shells can corrode uh -huh. and erode out. Right. And you, you need to pay attention to those kind of things. If, you, if you've got a, you know you got the right size handhole and it don't fit the hole anymore, mm. there's probably a repair that needs to be made. Right. So. Right. Yeah, it's something to look out for. Why don't we continue on with that that you're talking mm -hmm. about and really just how a gasket is actually sized to actually go around to get the proper one. Sure. So um, for both uh, manways and handholes, um, you take dimensions on the gaskets this way. I mean, it's uh, basically uh, you've, got, you've got a dimension long ways, mm -hmm. tip to tip and you've got a dimension sideways. Okay. And it usually starts with the, with the shorter dimension. So the side you would measure from side to side at the, at the thickest point. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, you can see this is about three inches. And then the long way this way is about four inches. So that's a three by four. And then you will have the thickness of the gasket, the actual width, uh -huh. and that's what would sit on there. So this would be like a three by, three by four by either a nine sixteenths or a half inch. Okay. And then there's a shape. 
Mm. So some of these gaskets are actually shaped differently. So this is what they call an oblong or ob round. Uh, it kind of looks like a racetrack. Yeah. Um, and then you've got an elliptical that looks more like a football. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the difference between this on your handhold plate is pretty important because mm -hmm. you can't put this on there. You'll have gaps hanging over. Okay. Um, same way with the manway, manway plate, you're going to measure across this way and the, uh, at, the, at the widest point and the length that way. Mm -hmm. um, the thickness of the material um, is kind of a standard between most manufacturers to be close to about uh, a quarter of an inch. Mm -hmm. um, and then you got to pay attention to what type of material you're using. Mm. So uh, in a scenario where you've got a neoprene, these are usually good for about 180 PSI. Okay. Um, you can get up uh, to several hundred PSI above that, even with the Teflon. Mm -hmm. And then you've got graphite that could go up to uh, 2000 PSI, mm. depending on the manufacturer and the thickness. Okay. Uh, and then you've got flexitalic is another uh, spiral wound flexitalic uh, that's got graphite sandwiched in between metal layers. And this is a similar, these two graphite and these flexitalic are kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the graphite's a little bit more forgiving with the uh, malleability of the gasket. Good word. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's what you need to pay attention to. Make sure you've got the right gasket material for the boiler that you're putting back together. Okay. How do you know when to replace a gasket? When you're at um, pretty much every time you open and close one, That's right. <laughs> good answer. you know, uh, the gaskets can look good. I mean, the, the compressibility of them, I mean, if you put a new one in and you go to tighten it out and it's loose, it's kind of loose and leaking. Yeah. You can probably take that gasket back out and put it back in. But once it's been under pressure and it's been heated up and yeah. been compressed, it's lost a little bit of the life. Yeah. And the, these gaskets aren't that expensive for the safety yeah. factor that you need. Yeah. Replace them. Replace them. You should That's be replacing right. them every time you open and close the boiler. That's right. That's yeah. right. And that being said, you actually have created something on BoilerWarehouse.com that you know you haven't. People can order gaskets, of course, but then you put a subscription service in. What? Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. So we wanted to make uh, it a little bit easier for our customers to create uh, a routine. Mm -hmm. You know, most of our customers have scheduled shutdowns throughout the year. They know mm -hmm. when these dates are going to happen. They're usually year in and year out on the same dates. Like everybody knows, July 4th shutdown, Christmas yeah. shutdown. Um, so we wanted to create the ability for the customer to be able to say, I need my gaskets on this date every year and they can set it and forget it and we'll just ship it to them every year. Yeah. Same time. Super, super yeah. idea. Multiple times a year even. Yeah. So really good idea. Any yep. other uh, things you wanted to go over? Is, that, um, is there a reason for the, the sizes of why you would use an elliptical? Or is it just a manufacturer choice? That's a, ma that's a manufacturer design. Okay. So the manufacturer, you know, they're going to design their boiler a certain way. Um, some of those guys want you to come back to them for the hand holes. So mm -hmm. they want, they want a certain shape, they want a certain size, and then they're going to stock it and you're going to call them and get that. And you're not really going to get them in other places. Right. So, um, it's really a design, um, uh, for what they prefer and in, and even the outer shells and the curvatures, like from boiler manufacturer to boiler manufacturer, the outer shells change. Mm -hmm. So you may have a 60 inch on one boiler manufacturer and you might have a 63 inch from another. Okay. Um, when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about the, the actual OD on the, on the shell. Right. And those curves are going to be radius different. Okay. So, you know, you can't necessarily take a superior hand hole and throw it on a Johnston. Right. Uh, sometimes they go back and forth as long as they're the same curve and the same uh, shape. Okay. But more often than not, you'll find that the manufacturers have different specifications for what they want for their hand holes. Okay. And you've got some manufacturer, different manufacturers here. Yeah. Yeah. Them. So um, like a, a, a York or a, even, even, you know, Fulton's, they may be three by fours, but the radiuses are different. Right. So, you know, um, so you see that, you'll see the different shape in the OB. Uh, Cleaver Brooks is notorious for having OB shaped gaskets. Mm -hmm. um, the three and a quarter by four and a half by nine sixteenths OBs, you know, those kind of stick out in everybody's mind. Yep. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's really, really the difference is the manufacturer and how, what they want to put in them. Right, right. Awesome, super information, yep. appreciate it. And you know where to call now. If you want to know a little bit about gaskets, this is the guy. And we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.
Appreciate Brian hanging out with us. And as always, it's always great to be able to talk with someone that knows the industry and knows the industry well. And uh, you can always go out and check out all of the gaskets that we do have on BoilerWarehouse.com. Uh, super place to be able to get all of, the, all of your parts for your boiler room. Awesome to see everybody at Boiler 2022. If you came by the booth, great to see you and hope to see you in two years um, as it is an every other year event. Well, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. If you don't mind, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And as always, share those videos. We'll see you next time on The Boiling Point. <laughs>